Hey everybody, Mike McWilliams. Testing one, two, is this thing on? <laughs> hey everybody. Hey everybody, Mike McWilliams, Upstairs to the Right Music Channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Again, a little bit of housekeeping as we do here and when we start off these videos of reminding you that we have a live stream that we do every Sunday night, 11 p.m. Central European time called Sunday at Mike's. Uh, there we discuss a wide variety of topics and a lot of interesting subjects that I think you will find interesting. So why don't you take the time to tune in with us every Sunday night, 11 p.m. Central European time, no matter where that finds you in the morning, the afternoon, the evening. I'd love it if you took the time to tune in. Thank you so much. Well, okay, let's get started here. Uh, we have a great guitar that we'd like to uh, talk about here today, and that is this one. This is the Tak. Matsumoto double cut custom uh, fresh off the plane from Japan. Um, it is quite a center. Uh, a little bit of uh, background on who Tak Matsumoto is. Tak Matsumoto is a well known songwriter, musician, and producer in Japan. Uh, he is part of the biggest selling group in Japan, uh, Biza. And uh, Biza is probably uh, one of my favorite uh, groups in Japan. Uh, so that's Bizu, is or BZ, as a BZ, as we would say here in the West. Uh, Bizu uh, is headed up by Tak Matsumoto as their lead guitarist. In the late 2000s, Gibson approached him and came up with an idea for a custom uh, model that was in his name, so a signature model, and they produced that, the Gibson Tak Matsumoto Double Cut Custom. Uh, a little bit later in 2008, and I want to thank uh, Noodling Guitars for pointing this out to me, that uh, was the first Epiphone uh, issue of that Gibson uh, Tak Matsumoto guitar. Uh, that was 2008. Again, they did it in 2012, and then in 2014 they did it one last time, but this time, whereas all those other preceding ones were only available in Japan, uh, they made this, two, this 2014 model available all over the world. And the truth of the matter is, actually most of them ended up in the UK, uh, very few in the United States, and so uh, still kind of a mystery guitar uh, outside of Japan mostly, um, but it's a real beauty. A uh, really interesting uh, thing about this guitar is that uh, this was a custom guitar, and most uh, customs uh, come with an ebony fretboard. Uh, this one in its spec list was uh, slated to have an ebony fretboard, but for some reason it shipped with a rosewood fretboard. At least I'm pretty sure it's rosewood. Uh, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably rosewood. So in this case, uh, yeah, so a little bit of a difference in spec on this one. You know, they do that sometimes. Uh, they will replace uh, certain things, uh, particularly the fretboard material. These days, as you know, they're using laurel. Uh, in this case, in 2014, I guess they ran out of, <laughs> out of ebony. They decided to make this one with a rosewood fretboard. But uh, other than that, uh, this is pretty much well stock for a Talk Matsumoto double cut custom. You have burst bucker two and three pickups here, uh, CTS wiring pots. Uh, interesting enough, uh, these are uh, Wilkinson Deluxe tuners here on this guitar, dating all the way back to 2014. So, uh, nice Wilkinson tuners on that. What else can I say? Mahogany body, um, beautiful five-ply binding on this guitar, and uh, really just a, a lightweight guitar. This thing couldn't be more than seven... 0.9 I'm thinking uh, maybe eight pounds barely that uh, so if you are into the Les Paul style guitar and you want something that's not going to break your back you might want to consider getting one of these because uh, certainly uh, I, I could see myself gigging this all night long to be honest with you as opposed to uh, this Les Paul back here uh, 8.6 pounds on this one uh, I don't know if I could do an all-nighter with it, but this one, this thing, you know, I'd be tempted to do a prince and <laughs> just throw it <laughs> after I'm done. It's so light. Uh, let's take a listen to it. Uh, let's listen to the neck, the middle, and the bridge position samples a little bit. I'll play for you and uh, take a listen to how it sounds. Uh, this is a 
this is really a growly guitar. It's got a lot of growl to it, especially down in the uh, bridge position pickup. So anyway, let's take a listen to that. there it is you've heard a little bit of how this talk Matsumoto sounds going through my laney behind here with the vintage uh, greenback um, yeah it's got a growl to it this is really um, in the clean setting it has a very jazzy smooth uh, sound to it I think uh, but when you get down into the in the neck position uh, it has a nice jazzy sound but when you get into the bridge on this thing, boy, uh, it starts to really howl at you. So, um, a gutsy guitar, a gutsy sounding guitar, quite different uh, than uh, Les Paul, actually, that I have here behind me. So, uh, for a sonic thing, uh, that's interesting to me because I don't have anything that quite sounds like this. Um, yeah, a beautiful guitar uh, that I have here to show you today, share with you a little bit. Um, I think that these guitars punch well above their weight in terms of their price. Uh, when they first came out, they were uh, around uh, $1,100 US. Uh, they still can be found out there in the wilds if you're looking for them. Uh, and they have actually one of those Epiphones that have held their value. So this one pretty much well is staying around that price. But uh, it comes with a beautiful uh, case uh, that I think is way better than the current Epiphone cases uh, and uh, really again uh, with these burst buckers uh, with the detailed work out of the box guys quite frankly this is the most flawless Epiphone that has crossed my hands in a long time no issues anywhere no problems nothing nothing no overspray here in the uh, where the neck meets uh, the body that usually happens. The binding is well scraped and done very well. It's got a nice beefy neck to it. Uh, I will say that much. This is, this is a 59 bordering up here on a 58 kind of neck. So do be aware if you are interested in this, it is not a slim taper neck. Uh, it's, got, it's got a little bit of beef to it, but not uncomfortable. I like it, as you know, I got big mitts, so it works for me. 
So, uh, yeah, just I wanted to take a moment and share this with you, uh, this Tak Matsumoto uh, back here on the back. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It says limited custom shop. This is back then when they were somewhat actually trying to limit them. Although 2008, 2012, 2014, well, at least they did these runs <laughs> and they broke it up a little bit as opposed to the Epiphone 59, which uh, is limited only uh, by how many they can uh, put out. <laughs> All right, that's it for today, guys. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to listen about this Talk Matsumoto Double Cut Custom, uh, a very fine guitar. I actually have a 2008 uh, version of this coming in, so we can uh, A and B those and see what differences were. I bet you that one has an ebony fretboard. <laughs> it's all right, actually, I, I like this. It's actually kind of cool and unique to have one with a rosewood, a little bit out of spec, so that makes this one kind of different and unique in that case. Um, thanks guys for taking the time to listen today. If you like today's contents, uh, please hit the like button. If you like uh, this channel and you want to join the community that's growing here, uh, hit the subscription button, uh, the bell notifications for you who have subscribed so you know there's new video, new content available. And until the next one, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.